Do you remember the first time you came across Mariastor? Perhaps it was on the flickering screen of an old television, or maybe you stumbled upon her image in a dusty vintage magazine. Whenever and however it happened, there's something undeniably nostalgic about that initial encounter with this iconic actress. Mary Astor, with her timeless beauty and undeniable talent, has left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. Her presence on screen could transport you to a different era, a place where glamour reigned supreme and emotions ran deep. For many, thinking of Mary Astor is like revisiting cherished memories of classic Hollywood. Now, as we delve into some random facts about Mary Astor, let's take a moment to reminisce about the magic she brought to the silver screen and the countless stories she helped weave into the tapestry of our own life. Mary Astor, the acclaimed actress of Hollywood's golden era, made a pivotal decision that marked her career's trajectory. After her role in Little Women, Astor opted not to renew her contract with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, citing weariness of portraying conventional maternal roles. Astor's departure from MGM was a notable move for an actress of her stature. Having gained fame for her diverse talent, she sought roles that transcended the humdrum mothers and instead challenged her artistic abilities. This decision was emblematic of Astor's determination to evolve in an industry often typecasting at stars. Her career spanned several decades, but it was during the 1920s and 1930s that Astor's earnings showcased her rising prominence. According to Real Facts, the movie Book of Records, she started at $500 per week in the early 1920s with famous players and steadily climbed to an impressive $3,750 per week at 20th Century Fox during the 1928-1929 season. This financial success mirrored her growing stature as a leading lady in Hollywood. In the annals of Hollywood history, Mary Astor's departure from MGM stands as a testament to her commitment to her craft and her determination to break free from stereotypical roles. Her journey from humble beginnings to becoming one of Hollywood's highest paid actresses in her era continues to inspire aspiring talents today. In 1941, Mary Astor secured her place in Hollywood history with an Oscar win that owed as much to friendship as it did to her acting prowess. Originally cast as Sandra Kovac, the fiery pianist in The Great Lie, it was Bette Davis who was supposed to take the leading role. However, Davis, in a selfless act, opted for a smaller part, Maggie Van Allen, to help Astor revive her career. Astor had been battling alcoholism for two decades, and her professional life was at a nadir when Davis stepped in. This decision proved pivotal for both actresses. Astor's compelling performance as Maggie earned her the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, marking a triumphant return to the limelight. Her nickname, Rusty, was attributed to her striking dark auburn hair. One fan magazine famously described it as Titian, which photographs black, and her eyes are very dark. This distinctive feature added to her allure on screen, making her a celebrated figure of her time. In 1949, Astor's personal struggles with alcoholism led her to check into a sanitarium, where she sought treatment for her addiction. It was a significant turning point in her life, setting the stage for her remarkable comeback. Mary Astor's journey through the highs and lows of Hollywood, from her hair's unique hue to her battle with addiction, remains a captivating chapter in the annals of cinema history. Her enduring friendship with Bette Davis and the Oscars' glory that followed illustrate the profound impact of camaraderie in the film industry. Mary Astor, the celebrated actress of Hollywood's golden age, led a remarkable life beyond the silver screen. One lesser-known chapter of her biography reveals her transition from the glitz of Tinseltown to a quiet life marked by health concerns. After her memorable role in Hush, Hush, Sweet Charlotte in 1964, Astor chose a serene existence, residing in Fountain Valley, California, alongside her son Tono. This period allowed her to step away from the demanding world of showbiz and embrace a more tranquil lifestyle. However, her struggle with a chronic heart condition became a significant factor in her life. By 1971, her health had deteriorated to a point where she needed specialized care. As a result, Astor made a poignant move to a small cottage situated on the grounds of the motion picture and television country house in Woodland Hills. This shift was necessitated by her heart ailment, which required constant attention and care. This transition marked a poignant turning point in Mary Astor's life, 
symbolizing her journey from the bustling sets of Hollywood to a peaceful retreat in her final years. Her decision to prioritize her health and well-being serves as a testament to her resilience and determination. Beyond her acting prowess, Mary Astor's life story is a reminder of the human side of Hollywood's icons, showcasing the sacrifices made for the sake of health and happiness. Mary Astor, the acclaimed actress of Hollywood's golden age, led a life replete with intriguing facets. Among them, her enduring friendship with Florence Eldridge and her husband, Frederick March, stands as a testament to the resilience of human bonds following tragedy. In the wake of her husband Kenneth Hawke's untimely demise, Mary Astor found solace in the comforting presence of her dear friends, Florence Eldridge and Frederick March. This intimate connection between the trio blossomed into a unique living arrangement, where Mary resided alongside the couple, sharing their home and their lives. The mutual support they provided one another during this trying period underscored the importance of friendship in the often tumultuous world of Hollywood. Astor's appreciation for her friends and colleagues extended beyond the confines of her personal life. Notably, during her Academy Award acceptance speech for Best Supporting Actress in 1942 for her role in The Great Lie, she thanked not only her co-star Bette Davis, but also the celebrated composer Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky. This unexpected reference to the Russian composer added a touch of whimsy to the occasion, showcasing Mary Astor's unique and multifaceted character. In the annals of Hollywood history, Mary Astor's enduring friendships and her penchant for surprise acknowledgments remain indelible markers of her life and career. As a beloved actress and a woman of depth, she continues to captivate our imaginations. This glimpse into the life of Mary Astor is a testament to her resilience, the power of friendship, and her ability to infuse unexpected moments of levity into her storied career. Mary Astor, a legacy of Hollywood's enduring talents, Mary Astor, an icon of the silver screen, left an indelible mark on Hollywood's history through her captivating performances and personal tribulations. While her filmography spans numerous titles, it's her final works that offer a unique insight into her last years in the limelight. Despite her glamorous on-screen persona, Astor's life was marked by the heart-wrenching loss of her parents. In February 1943, her father Otto Astor passed away from a sudden heart attack, casting a shadow over her career. Her mother, Helen, followed suit in January 1947, succumbing to a heart ailment. These tragedies deeply impacted Astor, shaping her artistic expressions and lending her performances a newfound depth that resonated with audiences. Delving into her filmography, an intriguing revelation emerges. Well, Hush. Hush, Sweet Charlotte is often cited as Mary Astor's final film on chronological lists. It's Youngblood Hawk that holds the distinction of being her actual last on-screen endeavor. Youngblood Hawk, released on November 4, 1964, took its place in cinematic history ahead of Charlotte, which saw its release about seven weeks later, on December 24. This nuanced sequencing adds a layer of intrigue to the twilight of Astor's cinematic journey. Astor's personal life was as complex and captivating as her on-screen roles. Her two children, daughter Marilyn Holly Thorpe and son Anthony Paul Del Campo, bore witness to her experiences as a mother and a woman navigating the intricacies of relationships. Daughter Marilyn was born on June 15, 1932, a product of Astor's marriage to Dr. Franklin Thorpe. Son Anthony, born on June 5, 1939, was the result of her union with Manuel Del Campo. These familial ties highlight the multifaceted nature of Astor's life, where her roles as both a Hollywood luminary and a mother converged. As we reflect on Mary Astor's legacy, it's clear that her impact extended far beyond the silver screen. Her ability to channel personal adversity into powerful performances, coupled with the intriguing details of her final filmography and her role as a mother, solidifies her as a true Hollywood luminary. Mary Astor's journey continues to captivate and inspire, reminding us that even in the face of personal challenges, artistry can shine through. Mary Astor, a life of Hollywood's enduring icon Mary Astor, the silver screen enchantress whose legacy still flickers brightly, left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. With a career spanning decades, Astor graced the silver screen with her captivating presence. While her performances are etched into the annals of film history, it is her captivating personal life that continues to draw intrigue. 
perhaps best known for her iconic role as Bridget O'Shaughnessy in The Maltese Falcon. A store's cinematic contributions extend beyond her acting prowess. Her name is etched in the golden roster of six films honored by the Library of Congress in the National Film Registry. These celluloid gems, Red Dust, Dotsworth, The Prisoner of Zenda, Midnight, The Maltese Falcon, and Meet Me in St. Louis stand as testaments to her ability to illuminate the screen with her magnetic presence. Yet, it is the real-life drama behind the scenes that perhaps eclipses even her on-screen achievements. In 1936, during the filming of Dodsworth, a scandalous affair with playwright George S. Kaufman was thrust into the spotlight. The revelation of this liaison threatened to sever her ties with the film, but Samuel Goldwyn, the astute producer, insisted on her continued participation. This audacious decision not only saved her role but added layers of intrigue to her mystique. While a store's life brimmed with glamour, it was not without its harrowing moments. The premature birth of her daughter Marilyn, two months ahead of schedule, unfolded dramatically on her yacht in Honolulu, Hawaii. Both mother and daughter clung to life's edge, a testament to their resilience. This chapter serves as a poignant reminder of the challenges she navigated beyond the cinematic lens. Mary Astor's legacy, adorned with both on-screen excellence and off-screen trials, continues to cast a spell on cinephiles and historians alike. Her journey through Hollywood's tumultuous tides remains a testament to her enduring spirit and the allure of a bygone era. As we bid adieu to this cinematic journey through the illustrious life of Mary Astor, let the silver threads of her performances linger in the tapestry of your memories. Like a constellation of stars, her roles have illuminated our screens, each character a unique facet of her boundless talent. Now, take a moment to look inward, for in the dance between her artistry and your emotions lies a personal connection that transcends time. Was it her vulnerability as Bridget O'Shaughnessy in The Maltese Falcon that struck a chord within you? Or perhaps the elegance she brought to Lady Gwendolyn in The Prisoner of Zenda that resonated? Whatever the source, Mary Astor's legacy lives on in the indelible marks left upon our hearts and the celluloid. Your thoughts are a testament to the power of storytelling, the bridge that unites performer and audience. As we stand at this juncture, I invite you to share your cherished memories and reflections on Mary Astor's performances. Let the digital pages of our discourse be a canvas upon which her brilliance is painted anew. In the grand tapestry of entertainment history, Mary Astor's impact shines brightly, an inspiration to generations past and those yet to come. Her ability to evoke laughter, tears, and introspection is a true gift to the world of cinema. As we conclude this chapter, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to you for accompanying me on this exploration of her life and work. Your time and interest are valued more than words can convey. So, as you carry forward the flickering images of Mary Astor's performances, may they kindle a flame of appreciation for the magic of the silver screen.